Hey everyone, Casey here. Welcome back to Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. It is time to move on to the second of four parts for this time limited side quest line. It's everything with cooking. And we have had a cooking quest line in the past. But this one is a little bit different. Tulip's grandparents are celebrity chefs and they're going to be judging a cooking competition and it's my job to organize and actually get contestants. So we've gotten one already who is Padilla. Next up we're going to see if I can try to entice Diego. There you are Diego. I had a feeling I might find you practicing your dueling skills out here. It's not easy being the best dueler at Hogwarts. It requires hard work, diligence, and a lot of practice. I see you are here as well. Presumably to challenge Diego Kaplan to a heated duel. After the two of us nearly destroyed Dragon Club, I wouldn't dream of challenging you again, Diego. No, I don't want to duel you, but I would like to challenge you to a different type of heated competition. Diego Kaplan is intrigued, but you have interrupted my training session. Help me finish my dueling practice, Casey, and then I will hear out what you have to say. I mean, as long as it's like an hour, I'm cool with that. As long as it's an hour, I'm cool with that! Thank you for indulging me, Casey. I've always found that I can think more clearly after a bit of practice. <laughs> so, now that we are finished, tell me about this intriguing new challenge of which you speak. I promise to help Tulip find some competitors for the cook-off. And since it is really important she impresses her famous Chef Grand, I'm recruiting only the finest of contestants. Have you given any thought to entering the competition? Of course, but out of curiosity, why ask Diago Kaplan rather than another friend? You're competitive, you're a showman. I'm assuming both, but competitive. Because you are the fiercest competitor I know, and you always strive to be the best at whatever you do. Yes, that is true. Diego Kaplan never shies away from a challenging competition. Alright, Casey, I've considered your offer and decided that I would very much like to participate. That's terrific, Diego. You will not regret this decision. Uh, uh, no, I will uh, not, because I will never have any regrets. Do you know what type of dish you would like to make? Uh, <laughs> of course. Diego Kaplan will bake an enchanting, dancing flan... <laughs> whose hypnotic wiggle will transfix any judges to dare consume it. That sounds incredible, Diego. With a dish like that, you're certain to be a strong competitor in this cook-off. I must confess, however, there is one aspect to my creation that still evades me. Actually having cooked it for the first time? Oh, what aspect would that be? I'm not sure how I will enchant my beautiful flan to dance, but I don't know a spell to accomplish that feat. After all, a flan is not something that makes for a perfect natural dance partner. Hmm, well, if you can't teach it to dance the old-fashioned way, Perhaps we should visit Professor Flitwick and see if he knows any charms to give your flan a little extra wiggle. What is a flan? It's no use, Professor. I'll never get it right. Perhaps I'd be better off just sticking with the muggle method. Just keep practicing. You'll get your souffle to rise eventually. That's absolutely hilarious. Because isn't his name Leviosa Kid? Mr. Casey, Mr. Kaplan, you're about the cooking competition as well, I presume. As a matter of fact, we are. Dago and I would like to ask about the dancing charms. Dancing charms? Intriguing. Oh. But, Mr. Kaplan, you're already an excellent dancer. What need would you possibly have for a dancing charm? Um, oh, uh... Obviously, this charm would not be used on the great fancy-footed Diego Kaplan himself. We would like to use it for... Uh, well, honestly, you'd never believe it if we told you. Oh! Is that so? I've been the charm professor at Hogwarts for many years now. Oh. And I've heard just about every explanation known to wizards and witches alike. Why don't you try me? We like to teach a Spanish dessert to dance. A dancing Spanish dessert? Well, I stand corrected. That is a new one. So, do you know any spells that might be able to help us? Hmm, let me think. There's Locomotor Wibbly, 
The Jelly Leg Jinx! Uh, I'm not sure that will help, as my vine doesn't have any legs to jellify. Ah, yes, of course! Which also means that Tarantalagra, the dancing charm, will not work for the same reason. Professor, sure you know of a simpler charm that doesn't require a target with legs. Well, I suppose you could always use Locomotor, which would allow you to move an object in any direction. That sounds perfect. We teach it to us? Oh. Since Locomotor is not a part of our standard curriculum, I would not be remiss to teach it without a good reason. So tell me, why should I make an exception and teach you Locomotor? To help a student in need to impress our celebrity guests. It is possible he has heard of these celebrity guests, and maybe you'll be all fangirling. Because Dig and I want to represent the school. And show the Madame's Karasu just how impressive Hogwarts students truly can be. We'd hate to let our celebrity guests and Professor Dumbledore down. You appeal to my sense of school pride. And I must admit, I'm a very big fan of the Chef's Karasu. Your cause is an admirable one. And so, I decided to teach you Locomotor. Let us begin our lesson. Yeah, I knew he liked celebrity cooking. He's old, so of course he does. All right, Professor. I believe you've now provided us with everything we need to properly cast locomotor. Yes. Now you just need to cast a charm. Why don't you try using that book on my desk as a target? Locomotor book! So that's the... that's the trace. Ah. Splendid! You perform locomotor perfectly, Mr. Casey! Thank you for teaching us, Professor Flerick. It is my pleasure. Representing Hogwarts in a positive light is always a worthwhile endeavor. Ho ho ho! And now that I've learned locomotor, I can finally begin to prepare my delicious flan for the cook-off. <laughs> the judges will most certainly be impressed. And they're not the only ones. Two will definitely be happy to learn I've recruited not one, but two excellent contestants for the competition. I should go find her and tell her the good news. I still don't know what a flan is. I still haven't looked it up either. Someone in the comments can let me know. I probably have seen it before, I probably just didn't know it was called that. Huh. Oh, is that what I'm gonna get? My chef's robe? Oh, hey Casey. Andre and I were just going over a potential design for some of the chef's ropes. Hmm. What do you think of my prototype KC? It's beautiful, it's practical. It's both. I love it. Your design is absolutely beautiful, and I expect nothing less from Andre Egru, style wizard. Thanks. Of course, the presentation of the food is important, but so is that of the people serving it. Uh... Yes, I agree. Though I am a bit concerned as to whether those robes will be practical enough for the competition. After all, things are bound to get messy. Mm. I'm not sure if that's meant to be a compliment or an insult, Tulip, but thanks. Uh. I'm sorry, Andre. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm just feeling nervous about the competition. Tulip, I've never seen you act nervous about anything. Is everything alright? I think the stress of putting on this event is really starting to get to me. There's still so much to do. And more than anything, I just don't want to let my grannies down. Well, I've got some news that's bound to cheer you up. I recruited two excellent contestants. Padilla is making an enchanted fish stew as we speak, and Diego is working on a magical dance flan. Oh, that's excellent news indeed. I've been thinking about doing a bit of recruiting since we last spoke. Hmm. I've recruited Esmelda to make a meat pie with blood sausages, and also... Jay had such a good time helping you and Badia find the fish that he decided to sign up as well. I'm shocked. I just assumed Jay wouldn't be interested because he hates doing hard work. 
Though, now that I think about it, he did tell me once that he secretly doesn't love the Kark. You don't think he's just planning on submitting some detention sandwiches though, do you? No, he assured me that he'll be making something else. His family's recipe for... Tiok... Baki rice cakes. With these four terrific contestants in the mix, I'm feeling such better about the state of things. Mm -hmm. The competition is sure to heat up now, but there's still a lot we need to do before the big event. Alright, Tulip, let's go over the final preparations for the cook-off and make sure we have everything in order. I was hoping Marula would enter, and I think I talked about Barnaby as well, but I guess not. It sounds like we're in very good shape for the big day, Tulip. Everything is coming together nicely. Yes, I agree. But there is one very important thing I just remember that we still need to do, Casey. Huh. And that's to find a host for the cook-off. Hmm, you're right. No competition is complete without a host to provide commentary and create excitement. And thankfully, I know the perfect person for the job. Murphy McNally. Oh, oh yes. Murphy would be wonderful. Do you think he'd be willing to be our host? There's only one way to find out. I'll go ask him. If I can successfully get Murphy McNally on board, we'll finally be able to start the cook-off. I kind of figured it would be him. He's the only like, commentary person in the game. Oh, wait a second. Did I just see handshakes? That means this is going to be a, a friendship one. <laughs> Greetings, Casey. I saw you heading this way and calculated a 91.4% chance it was come to say hello. Well, that was 100% my intention, Murphy. So, what brings the great curse breaker of Hogwarts to this humble corner of the Great Hall? Are you here for the most rousing, most riveting round of wizard's chess you've ever played in your life? That sounds enticing, Murphy, but today, I'm here with some bigger fish to fry. Pow! And KT serves up an absolutely delicious metaphor right to McNally's plate. Unless, of course, you were literally talking about frying a fish. Actually, in this case, I sort of was. And that's the reason I wanted to come talk to you. Tulip and I are trying to find a host for the cook-off, and we're wondering if you'd be interested. You want me to host a cooking competition? Then that's a play I did not see coming. But I'm a Quidditch announcer, not a chef. And aside from flip-flopping the occasional fish frying flourish, I honestly don't know all that much about cooking. Do you really think I would be good at the job, KC? It's just like a sporting event, you are great at pleasing crowds. I guess at the end of the day, it's really more about the entertainment aspect, right? Not so much about the advanced statistics. Unless you're like a more of a hardcore fan. I'm talking about Quidditch, by the way. Of course, Murphy. You don't need to know everything about cooking in order to entertain the crowd. Creating a dramatic and exciting experience is what matters, and you could do that with your eyes closed. I never thought about it that way, and I do quite enjoy spinning up the crowds. It is a fascinating theory, but I'm not sure I'm convinced, so let's discuss the details of the competition. And then, I will decide whether or not to accept your offer. It is a friendship. Oh, that's great. Oh man, I'm barely hanging out with this one. 45, 45, 44. What am I at? 45, 45, 45. Whoa, whoa, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also thinking, by the way, that it just goes by what you currently are at. What is the chance of success? 21%, 72.93%, 99.87%, 99.87%. Bottom one? If it was 21%, I would have had no idea. Obviously, we just go with the highest one. What will the competition be like? If it's a good time, everyone wins. The competition will be fierce. It will be boring. Top. No way! If it's a good time, everyone wins! Although the competition will be fierce. Tell me about the judges. Some say they're entertaining, they're not very sporting, they're at the very top of their game. Buy one.
Why are you asking me? You're the only announcer here. Your words will elevate the event. I'm not really sure. Technically, it's the top one. Because he really is the only announcer that we have at Hogwarts. But it's the middle one. If you can prove me wrong game, then by all means. What about the event's pacing? It will have some ups and downs, it will be fast and dramatic, it will be a bit slow. I don't watch a lot of cooking competitions and cooking shows, but they try to make it as dramatic as possible. Oh, come on, are you serious? What will the fans want to hear? That doesn't matter, exciting play-by-plays, details about the chef's recipes. It's probably going to be green for the middle and yellow for the bottom. Yes, indeedy. <laughs> He's convinced! I'm shocked. That was impressive, Casey. You filled in my questions as easily as Roderick Plumpton catches golden snitches. And with as much conviction as Glennis Griffiths after her seven day match against Heidelberg Harriers. So, does that mean you agree to host a cook-off, Murphy? If there's a crowd in need of rousing, it would be my honor to regale them with play-by-plays of the events. <laughs> and so, I have decided to accept your offer as a host for the Great Hogwarts Cook-Off. The Great Hogwarts Cook-Off, eh? That has a nice ring to it. <laughs> I just came up with it on the spot. See? I knew you'd be the right person for the job, Murphy. Let's head over to the kitchens. It's time for the Great Hogwarts Cook-Off to begin. You mean that's what it wasn't called the whole time? I guess it was just called Cook-Off. So part two is complete. I am now halfway done. And I'm going to be moving into the third part where the cook-off is going to begin. I want to see what the dishes are going to look like. Because I know Tulip's going to have that stew, that fish stew. Reminds me of the episode of The Simpsons when George W. Bush goes through the drive through And he's like, crusty burger. That doesn't sound very appetizing. What kind of stew do you have today? Anyway, I will see you with the second half of this cook-off and we're going to see exactly how this plays out and of course we have to get our outfit at the very very end move forward in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery so thank you everybody so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one bye everybody